living ironically in europe bro europeans are the best i don't know where are you from but europeans bro Mwah. even though we can't like each other <laughs> we don't like each other that much here in europe but we hate you others <laughs> outside of europe <laughs> no i'm just kidding civil and respectful Trump albania relations by the way um this is so crazy actually i learned that on tiktok so all the slaves no not slaves um how you call that slavics <laughs> slaves <laughs> all the slavic slavic nations like poland um like bosnian serbs i don't know which one latvia and all of that right <laughs> they are so close to each other in a region known for frozen conflicts ancient blood feuds and 4d chess geopolitics known as the balkans the relationship between Albania and Serbia seems to stand out as a particularly conflictual. <laughs> antagonistic and hostile. Okay, I, me, Albanian boy, your family complete. Oh my God. With everyday personal interactions often devolving into some of the pettiest schizophrenic bickering in the comments of videos mostly made in Microsoft Paint. So it's trying to make a normal conversation on the internet i mean basically <laughs> the reason for this may seem obvious if you live in the balkans chances are close to 100 percent that you've been caught in the crosshairs of some sort of argument regarding its sovereignty that you couldn't care less about yet the relationship between the serbs and albanians has a far richer history than the current flinging autistic screeching meltdowns over whose symbol gets to be on license plates would suggest no understand this present day rivalry we're going to have to go way way back in time to the ancient proto-balkans <laughs> proto-balkans bro settings to go back in the past why are we still in the 21st century balkans to find out why 21st century balkans <laughs> bro i love that guy Dubbing. Albanians hate each other, we have to go back to sometime in the 4th century BC. To understand this relationship, we have to examine the Illyrians specifically. Now, if you're familiar with online Balkan shitfits, the Illyrians will probably ring a bell. The Illyrians were an ancient Indo-European peoples who inhabited the area of present-day Serbia, Montenegro, Croatia and Albania, with their two kingdoms of Illyria and Dardania, existing from the 4th century BC to 167 BC, up until they were conquered by the Romans. Now, before diving into deep, we have to make a note that the origin of the Albanians and especially the Albanian language is still a bit of a mystery. Albanian is an ancient Paleo-Balkan language. It is one of the only two surviving language trees. Wait a minute, what? Celtic, Albanian, Hellenic, Italic, <laughs> Italic, Latin, Portuguese, really Spanish, Italian, French. Oh, they are all the same, bro. Irish. All right, the, the Celtic were like Irish, Welsh. I don't know, Britain. Albanian is pure. Here you can see. All right. Then the other one is Armenian. Yeah, Armenian is also pure. No one is related to the Albanian language. Yeah. Of this family. Greek is the other and obviously is descended from ancient Greek, but we still aren't entirely sure where the Albanian language came from. Partially due to the fact that no other languages are related to it and it wasn't written down until relatively late in history. Language nerds speculate the most likely theory is that the language evolved from Dacian, Thracian, and most importantly, Illyrian, or maybe another tongue or <laughs> <Far. combination> languages. <laughs> Again, bro, again. <laughs> I, I have to do it louder, bro. Another tongue or some hear it, hear it. languages. <laughs> because of this link, or maybe another tongue or some combination of languages. Chief Shannon. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so good. Because of this linguistic and geographic link, the Albanians claim to be the direct descendants of the Illyrians. Naturally, this being the Balkans, 
everyone wants to prove to be the most ancient and accomplished peoples in the region. Oh yeah. Who are the rightful descendants of the Illyrians is a deeply contested topic that no doubt has already inspired several hundred page dissertations in the comment section. Not that it matters, since we all know Hungary has been here before anyone else, and it gave away its lands to everyone else, because <laughs> Hungary is a friendly country that loves and treasures its neighbors dearly. <laughs> the last we are learning history now. Albanian historians claim the country has unbroken descent from the Illyrians, and most historians agreed that there is at least some truth to this, but we just don't have the tools right now to make any 100% definitive declarations of the fact regarding the Albanians' true ancestors. The Albanians also claim that the Dardanians, the ancient inhabitants of modern day Kosovo, were an Illyrian people, and therefore Albanian. <laughs> Thus, the reason the Albanian Illyrian connection is so important to modern times. How Albanians wants to imagine the Illyrians, how they actually look like. <laughs> 100%! This is because it is used to show that the Albanians were actually the rightful owners of Kosovo because, see, they were there first. And because national identity and territorial claims intertwined so tightly, the Albanians are fervently insisted on their Illyrian heritage because to them, proving this lineage proves that their claim to Kosovo is legitimate. Therefore, to the surprise of absolutely no one, in response to this, an entire industry emerged in Serbia of debunking this claim. With just as much nationalistic fervor, with even some Serbian nationalists insisting that no, actually, the Serbians are rightful heirs of the Illyrians, and so therefore, Serbians have been in Kosovo the entire time. And the Albanians, in fact, actually came from the Caucasus Mountains in Russia. While Albanian what? nationalists, on the other hand, claim that it is actually in fact the Serbs that came from the Ural Mountains in Russia. Because anyone I don't like is actually from Russia. Skipping ahead to the 14th century and the rise of the Ottomans. With the encroachment- Wait, what the fuck did he say? In fact, the Serbs that came from the Ural Mountains in Russia. Because anyone I don't like is actually from Russia. Everyone I don't like is actually for Russian. <laughs> Some people don't understand why Kosovo is so important, but we EU4 players know it's a gold producing province, so it's really all worth it. Skipping ahead to the 14th century and the rise of the Ottomans. With the encroachment of the Turks into Europe, arguably the most culturally evocative event in Serbian history occurred in Kosovo. Kosovo at the time was the center of the Serbian Empire and was home to its most important churches and monasteries and was the central heartland for Serbian art, poetry and culture. In 1389, a great battle against the Ottomans ensued in Kosovo Polje, aka Field of Blackbirds, led by Serbian Prince Lazar Hrebljanovic. Both armies were effectively destroyed, but the Serbs managed to slay the Sultan himself. This battle was heavily mythologized into the Serbian consciousness via art and poetry and also entered the Serbian Orthodox Church canon. The Battle of Kosovo was also essential for the Serbian National Revival Movement in the mid-19th century as well, which dubbed the territory the name of the Heart of Serbia. A common question is why Serbia still fights tooth and nail to hold on to Kosovo, while it let Montenegro and Macedonia secede peacefully and calmly. This battle is precisely why. It is impossible to overstate the impact this battle had on the Serbian national consciousness and the formation of the Serbian identity found in its tragic opposition to the oppressive Ottoman conquest. Like most Balkan countries, Serbia's past remains deeply integrated in its modern political reality, and this influence is still readily available in Serbian culture today. This is why, in the Serbian collective consciousness, Kosovo cannot be let go, and why Serjan keeps spamming Kosovo is Serbia on every Dua Lipa music video. Despite the fact that the ne <laughs> On every Dua Lipa music video, bro. Fought alongside the Serbs in the Serbian-led coalition army during the Battle of Kosovo, when the region finally succumbed under Ottoman control a short while later, many Albanians, much like Andrew Tate and most of the Manosphere, gradually chose to convert to Islam. Christian soy boy beta males and maintaining <laughs> soy boy beta males <laughs> resistance against the perceived colonizing imperialists. Serbia never quite got over this and saw the Albanians' as conversion to Islam as a personal betrayal and were disgusted that their former allies were working with the enemy rather than keeping their previous unit together to overcome the colonizer occupiers and invaders. <laughs> over the next couple of centuries, 
centuries, the Balkans under Ottoman rule became subject to intense demographic shifts as many Turks settled in their newly conquered states and converted many of the locals to Islam as well. As a reward for conversion, the Ottoman state would allocate government positions and general positions of power to the newly converted Muslims and put them in charge of ruling and- Wait, what? Look at that image, bro. Of power to the newly converted Muslims. <laughs> Inshallah, <laughs> Ooh, bro, I can't, bro. Oh my gosh. And put them in charge of ruling and managing generally Christian provinces, which continually raised. Uh oh. <laughs> bro, this video is so good. Now oppressing and mistreating their Christian subjects. After the Ottoman defeat to Russia in the Russo-Ottoman War in 1878, a substantial chunk of territory was awarded back to Serbia and this included the Sanjak of Nish and Toplica, which had a substantial population of Albanians at the time. The Serbians, not especially in the mood to accommodate Muslims they saw as traitors and oppressors, began a campaign of violent forced expulsion with the Muslim population going from 131,000 in 1876 to 12,000 in 1882. What the fuck? Thieves, bro. Thieves. Disgusting. Resulted in Albanian hostility towards the Serbs and greatly contributed to the formation of the League of Prizren, which effectively became <clears throat> the Albanian national movement for recognition for their own city state. Oh my gosh. Look at them, bro. Ooh. Ooh. Goosebumps, bro. Look at these statues, bro. This mustache, bro. Mm. Oh my gosh. He is a prime example of mustache, bro. Ooh. All were chats, bro. Yeah. Bro, having flashbacks. <laughs> My prime, 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 prime granite. Many of these exiled Albanians fled to Kosovo, where today they make up quite a large and powerful subgroup in Kosovo's political spheres, and they have very long memories. During the First Balkan War in 1912, once the Ottomans were kicked out of the Balkans, Serbia, Montenegro and Greece partitioned all the former Ottoman territory inherited by Albanians, with each one getting a healthy chunk of new territory. Now, due to the fact that living under and with the Ottomans was pretty <laughs> for each of them, they weren't in the mood to be especially accommodating to the Albanians, who they saw as Muslims who sold out the Christian faith and <laughs> accommodating to the Albanians. Wait, what? Who they saw as Salam Alaikum Skanderbeo, you very big Albanian hero. We Illyrians, Shipraria Ethnica, Kosovo is Albania. We beat infidel or Serb, Montenegro, no, monasteries in Kosovo Albania. Nimanis are Shiptar. You fought for Albanian nation, you Albanian. Muslims who sold out the Christian faith and benefited enormously from integration with the Ottomans by being awarded seized lands and riches taken from the native population. Much of the time the locals would see Albanians as the tools the Turks would utilize to do their dirty work for them while reaping the rewards of social privilege at expense of the locals. While the reality was never this black and white and many Albanians also had a pretty time under the Ottomans as well as their national hero Skenderbeg famously leading successful resistance against the Turks, this is the Balkans, and uh, there is no time for nuance. Serbia was elated with the results of the First Balkan War, seeing it as the Serbian nation finally avenging the 1389 Battle of Kosovo. Oh, objective now, wait, wait, wait. A path to the Adriatic Sea, so it could finally share a border with its one true love, Greece. As an important conference in London <laughs> was fast approaching that would determine the new Balkan borders, Serbia decided to engage in some good old-fashioned statistical manipulation via forced expulsions, massacres and ethnic cleansing of many Albanian settlements they perceived as being in their way. Like any Balkaner, Albanians have long memories and propensity for <laughs> blood feuds, and these incidents remain lodged into their collective cultural memory, which still today presents a huge rift between the relations of the two. Following the Treaty of London in 1913, Albania finally got its wish for an independent state. However, around half the population of Albanians was now located outside of its borders, located in the countries that still weren't especially happy to see them. 
Another major incident between the two was during World War I. In the winter of 1915, Serbia's army found itself encircled by the Austro-Hungarians, Germans and Bulgarians, with their only option being to retreat through the mountains of Albania and Montenegro to make it to the Greek island of Corfu. While the King of Albania may have given permission to the Serbians to pass through, the Albanian population was less than accommodating with various mountain tribes doing their best to pick off the Serbian troops via guerrilla warfare on their way to the sea, seeing it as a long-awaited revenge. Of the 400,000 people crossing Albania, only 180,000 made it to the sea to be evacuated by the Allied ships. By the time World War II hit the floor, and Germany decided on its grand world tour, the relations between the world tour. And Albanians had a slight change of pace. The People's Liberation Armies of Yugoslavia and Albania worked closely together, and Yugoslavia was actually the first country to recognize the new government of Albania in 1945. During the Cold You're War, cool, I guess. there were actually plans to potentially create a Balkan federation that would compromise Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Yugoslavia, and Albania. And what a wonderful country that would have been. Albania and Yugoslavia were in such good relations that Tito and Hoxha planned on integrating Albania into Yugoslavia and signed treaties that almost fully integrated Albania into the Yugoslav economy and the armies planned to integrate as well. This plan never came to fruition because after the Tito-Stalin split, Hoxha's loyalty stood with Stalin. After that, the relations between the two went cold again. <laughs> Original Albanian Hoxha's teeth, bro. I'll show you. <laughs> the two went cold again as Albania closed itself off from Yugoslavia and prepared itself for a theoretical Yugoslav invasion like a schizophrenic barricading himself from gang stalkers but with bunkers instead. In the 80s with the death of Tito an Albanian backed Kosovo independence movement began and started to make Serbia quite nervous and due to not wanting to be instantly demonetized, I'll keep this as brief as possible. When Slobodan Milosevic came into power, he promised the Serbs in Kosovo that he'd protect them from the Albanians, which he did by yanking away Kosovo's autonomous state and taking over its media and schools and revoking much of the minority rights the Albanians had there while also cracking down on dissidents. Albania backed the Kosovo Liberation Army, which began a campaign of guerrilla warfare against the Serbian military, which retaliated in return. Due to the previously mentioned historical tensions and grievances, no one was especially inclined to sit down and argue in good faith, and everything went into chaos, with many Serbian and Albanian civilian and military casualties with hundreds of thousands of Albanians being forced from their homes, culminating in NATO bombing Serbian targets and basically both sides deciding they hate each other's guts for generations to come, with each side accusing the other of deliberate military provocation almost daily. The rivalry extends to the small scale as well. There are accusations of stealing each other's national heroes, Serbia accuses Albania of appropriating Miloš Obilić as their own, and the mainstream belief in Serbia is that Skanderbeg is Serbian. Both Albania and Serbian textbooks will teach wildly different versions of the same historical event while using nearly the exact same vernacular to deride how evil and unreasonable the other side is. Which although is nothing new for the Balkans is nevertheless quite sad. But not all hope is lost in this relationship. While it is made up of ethnic Albanians, the Kosovo government acts independent of Tirana. And so Albania and Serbia in recent years have been pursuing to improve relations. The country's leaders met in 2014 for the first time since 1947 and along with Macedonia formed the Open Balkan Initiative, a sort of mini Schengen to facilitate trade and exchanges. The events that transpired in recent history are still a thorn in the eyes of both but hopefully with time and uh, lots and uh, lots of EU funds, the two will be able to forgive each other and move on. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click. Ooh, look at them beauties. Pop them booty, bitch. Yeah.